chapter. Ow. Reading a little lengthy so that you all sit down today. Judges, seventh book of the Bible, chapter 16, starting in verse 20. Judges chapter 16, starting verse 21. I say it's good to be back home. Been gone for a couple weeks. There's no place like home. Y'all got to bear with me. One more, one more week. I got to go home again. And I got to preach a homecoming service next Sunday. The church I grew up in. So then I'm done traveling for the summer, I think. You see what God says. A lot of stuff packed into June, so I apologize. But I got to spend some time with my mom. That six days. That's the longest I've been home for about at least 10 years. Um, just to be able to hang out with her was a blessing. Amen. I got to go to church with my other mother, my best friend's mom. So we went to church. I got to spend time with her as well, which is good. And, and as your parents get older, it's important that we take that time out to spend, especially when we're a long way away. Um, it was good for me to be home. I did miss being in church. The blood and the oil, y'all making it hard. Y'all preaching so well. I said, I got all this pressure. <laughs> you know, but guess what? It's not about me, right? <laughs> when you get to where you think it's about you, you're making a wrong mistake. I want to say welcome. I was going to say little Key. I forgot Ray's last name. White, little white, new white. Uh, congratulations to Nissa from the pulpit. So glad that you were able to uh, give birth and all that stuff. So thank God for our newest member. Yes. yes. Amen. That's good stuff. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Uh, 22 years ago, I became a father. Wow. Boy, do I remember that. Miss Zulu telling us stories to keep us calm. 21 hours of labor. Josh couldn't, well, didn't want to come out. But he couldn't get him out. It was, but he's here. Yes. Yes. I said, go ahead. I listened to him talk. I said, go ahead, preacher. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good yeah. to me. But there's something about struggle. I'm ready to talk about that. So let's go to the Word of God. All right. Judges chapter 16, starting in verse 21. And it reads, the Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes. They brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze shackles. And he was forced to grind grain in the prison. But his hair began to grow back after he had been shaved. Now the Philistines' leaders gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to their god, Dagon. They rejoiced and said, Our God has handed over our enemy, Samson, to us. When the people saw him, they praised their god and said, Our God has handed over us over to us our enemy who destroyed our land and who multiplied our dead. When they were drunk, they said, bring Samson here to entertain us. So they brought Samson from prison and he entertained them. They had him stand between the pillars. Mm. Samson said to the young man who was leading him by the hand, lead me where I can feel the pillars supporting the temple so I can lean against them. The temple was full of men and women. All the leaders of the Philistines were there. About 3,000 men and women were on the roof watching Samson entertain them. He called out to the Lord, Lord God, please remember me, strengthen me. God, just once more with one act of vengeance, let me pay back the Philistines for my two eyes. Samson took hold of the two middle pillars supporting the temple and leaned against them, one on his right hand and the other on his left. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. He pushed with all his might and the temple fell on the leaders and all the people in it. And the dead he killed at his death was more than those he had killed in his life. I'm going to stop there. May God have a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. Let us pray. Gracious Father, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for your people. And I ask now that you let your Holy Spirit fall. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be accepted in my sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. This Father's Day message is a, a this a mother ever heart Miss Netta sermon. Hopefully they can relate. 
to what I'm getting ready to talk about. The title of my sermon today is The Batter is Not the Cake. Wow. The Batter is Not the Cake. Some of you all may say, well, gee, where are you going with that? What does that have to do with Samson? What does that have to do? What does cake have to do with Father's Day? Or we know what cake could have to do with Father's Day, you know, making some good cake. <laughs> but that's not the cake that I'm talking about. So I kind of brought a couple of visual aids, and I'm going to try to preach this thing and get out the way. The batter is not the cake. Anybody who makes cakes, y'all know you got to put some things together to make the batter. So, um, I brought a bowl. I got an egg. Got some salt. Some flour. Some vanilla flavor. Is all that good stuff to go on the cake? Is that yeah. yeah. that work? Yeah. <laughs> <It's acid. laughs> <laughs> got some butter. Right. Yeah. That'll help it out. I know I didn't get everything, but I just try to get it. Got some milk. That'll help. That'll work it out. Yeah. Right. I'll have this devil do it out you tell <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that stuff. And, you know, again, I'm not going to put food with this stuff on. We got some measuring spoons and we got some cups. Because there has to be the right amount of ingredients to put in the batter to make this cake work. I know we gotta have some baking powder in there because something's some gonna make it rock. Right? Uh, I got it. The batter is not the cake. How many of y'all was? Anybody over 50 know about licking the bowl? Y'all know anything about licking the bowl? Oh, boy, ain't nothing like licking that young bowl. <laughs> Woo, that bowl be good. I y'all ever stuck your finger in the bowl and almost got your head knocked up? Because <laughs> grandmama or mama hadn't poured the batter into the pan yet and you were one that taste that batter, you know? Y'all ever lick, anybody ever lick the bowl? Ah, oh, baby, y'all see? <laughs> But how many of y'all know, I don't care how good that batter was, that batter did not taste like the cake. Right. And so we have a bowl, just like Samson had some expectations. When Samson was born, he was born a Nazarite. What a Nazarite is is somebody who's been specifically set apart or consecrated for the service of God. And he was supposed to abstain from alcohol, avoid touching something that was dead, and he was not supposed to cut his hair. Yeah. Those, were, those were the parameters that was, his parents were given for him. We're starting to make the batter because the batter is not the cake. He was, he was given a responsibility to save the Israelites from the Philistines. He was at a time when they had judges. They hadn't gotten kings yet. They had judges. And Samson was a judge for 20 years. But how many of you all know that there was a bowl of experiences that Samson had to go through? Mm -hmm. All I read was the last part because I think the last part is most important. But if we could do a quick lesson, I don't want to talk about it long. How many of you know Samson was given great strength? Amen. I know Chael and his partner, defensive lineman, they're going to have some strength. Yeah. In order to have some strength, they got to lift weights, they got to train, they got to eat right, they got to do all these things that um, Coach Grant wants them to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Coach Grant. My kids went to Wazella, so y'all are the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going to talk about that right now. Now I got a chip for eating prairie because y'all go there. And I got a chip for my people. So, and I hate eating prayers, so now I gotta go against my anyway. <laughs> Samson was given great strength. He didn't have to lift weights for it. He didn't have to do anything special. He was already empowered and equipped to be strong. But he was given some directions to follow. He wasn't supposed to talk to women who were not part of 
this tribe. He was from the tribe of Dan. So, what ended up happening was this. He used his strength. He whooped some Philistines here and there. He killed a lion. But he also messed with a couple of women who were not uh, from his tribe. He messed with two Philistine women. As I was listening to the testimonies, sometimes you got to put some Tina, Tisha, and Tammy into the boat. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm saying. And Trisha and Danielle in the bowl. Joshua, Mariama in the bowl. And Missy, why am I saying these fathers' children's names? Because one of the things that gets mixed in our bowl is family members. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jay, Jeremiah. Let me get a teaspoon of thunder and a dip of Agnes and a pinch of McCain. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 I'm talking to Stanley. Boy, you drinking that real good right now. Yes, have your way down. All this stuff. And we're going to throw a, a big thing of Sherry Orr. <laughs> understand what he should understand was when he started talking to Delilah. Mm. Delilah started to find the secret of his strength. Yeah. Play a hater. <laughs> People that say they're your friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. All that stuff that we got to mix. It, well, let's go on and say church folk. Mixing this all up into the batter, but the batter does not make the cake. Samson was with this woman who said, Samson, where did your strength lie, baby? Oh, <laughs> oh baby, all you got to do is tie me with some fresh rope. Shouldn't that have been his first sign? Yeah. Yeah. She get the secret, she call her people in, they tie them in the rope. Now, Samson, what are you thinking about? Wow. You know she's trying to get you the first time. Yeah. He break loose and he goes right back. Right. Woo! Matter, not cake. Some of us don't learn the first time. And we had a, uh, you know, we so smart, uh -huh. so sophisticated, yeah. so educated. Yeah. We don't figure it out. We don't need God's help on um, this one. <laughs> but the pattern does not make the cake. The pattern. So Samson do three, two or three more times. Yeah. Come on, Samson. Right, right. Come on, saints. Yeah. How many times do we got to go through the same situation before we learn mm -hmm. that the battle is not the cake? Jesus. I think some of us like licking the bowl. Uh -huh. We satisfied with the taste of the battle. Yeah. Even though the battle is killing us. Yeah. Our visitor said she had to get out of Minnesota because she thought she was going to die here. Yeah. The batter, not the cake. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut this short. Uh -oh. Got a pain. Right. What happens after we mix all these experiences up? All that trouble, all that pain, mm -hmm. all those good things, because everything is not negative that goes into the batter. Right, right, but right. the batter is still not the cake. Yes. The batter has to be poured. Use your imagination of pouring all this batter into this pan. Mm -hmm. The batter goes into a pan as a liquid substance. Mm -hmm. Boy, you preaching this bad boy. There's nothing solid about something that's liquid. Yeah. Uh -huh. How many of you 
know there has to be a process, a process. before the cake can become a cake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Makeda said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she said, I'm in a fire right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. In order for your batter to become a cake, you got to be put in the oven and go through some fire. Oh, boy. Yeah. 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 It's funny how when the fire comes, reach it, reach it. the liquid substance changes its form. Yes. 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 Samson finally gave Delilah his secret and they cut his hair. They cut his hair and they threw him in prison. And they gouged his eyes out. This strong man has been whooping folks left and right now. He has given up his secret because he didn't follow instructions. Sometimes we can avoid some bad situations if we just follow simple instructions. But we don't want to listen. We want to do it our way. So we go through some unnecessary we go through some unnecessary mixing. Because yeah. <laughs> we too hard-headed. Right. So we're going to have to experience that. So, Samson is in, he's in prison with his eyes poked out. <laughs> with his eyes poked out, no strength, they laughing at him. Just like they laugh at us as Christians when we live defeated lives. Right. But I don't want y'all to get caught up in the defeated life because That's sometimes right. the defeated life is necessary for the cake to right. taste That's the way true. it needs to taste. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Some of y'all saints don't believe, think drinking is a sin. It is. No man, it's not a sin. Well, it's a sin if you overindulge. If you overindulge, overindulging and drinking are two different things. I don't, want, I don't want to be the pastor to make you go, I don't want to make you feel bad, so I ain't going to argue with you, but I am going to say this. Okay. Overindulging can be in anything, right. not just right. drinking. Not just drinking. So we have, to, we have to be clear right. on how we do it, but there's some cakes that got liquor in it for them, right. for them Bible told saints. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm right. just trying to help somebody. Huh? And we run to them cakes, don't we? Okay. And then there's a such thing as a rum cake? Is that yeah, there is. I'm just asking. Yeah. Rum cake got rum in it? Yeah. Is rum liquor? Okay. Whatever, we're going to keep on going. Y'all ain't in there. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Anyway, as we get ready to get put in the fire, Samson is there struggling. But he said, God, can I get one more blessing? All right. Yeah. Can you help me one more time? Oh, and then the Bible says his hair began to grow. All right. So the hair was the source of his strength. Mm -hmm. And so as I was thinking about this sermon, sometimes when we are in the pen, we want to get out the fight. Think of this pan as being God's presence or God's spirit or being the safe place Whoa, while you're in the fire. Because if you, if you ever spill some batter in the oven while the cake is cooking, what you think going to happen? The cake is not going to be right. But the cake has to stay the course in the pan. Y'all not getting what I'm saying. Samson says, son, let me touch these pillars. Now he was predestined to take the Philistines out. He didn't do it the way he could have done it. But he did it because he stood there and he pushed the pillars down and crushed over 3,000. He killed more that day than he had in his whole lifetime. So from that sense, he fulfilled his destiny. So, the lesson, the lesson, Samson was a Nazarite, 
He was a judge for 20 years. He was given great strength. He did exploits. He got tricked by a prostitute. Got his hair cut. Gave up his secret. He ended up getting his eyes poked out. And he killed more Philistines at his death than he did throughout his whole life. That's the lesson. That's not what I want y'all to get. Y'all can go away with some information. But what is the message? There's a difference. We always learn the story. We can talk about Samson frontwards and backwards. But do we understand the application of what I'm talking about? The application of what I'm saying is this. Your batter is not your cake. Your situation is not the end result. Your situation that you're in, you're going to have to go through some fire. You're going to have to go through some fire so you can come out on the other side smelling better, looking better, and tasting better. The message is you will be better if you stay in the pan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Staying in the pen is about being connected to God, understanding who He is, understand what His goal is for our life, understanding His grace, yes. understanding that life gets hard yes. and we make mistakes, and we make mistakes, and we make mistakes, and we make mistakes, and we make mistakes. But if you stay in the pan and you're in the fire, you will come out better. Because grace is always abounding yes. for us. Mm -hmm. But Satan would like to take us out of the pain. Yes. Take us out of it. And some of us, we so silly, we don't trust enough. Yeah. That's true. Samson is in Hebrews in the Hall of Fame for people who have faith. Yes. And y'all say, how in the world? He lived reckless. Yes. He did. He didn't live up to his ability. He could have did it better. He could have, maybe. But he still accomplished something. Mm -hmm. The message is for us. I don't care where you're at in the battle. Mm -hmm. I don't care where you're at in your situation. Right, right. Josh gave us a remedy in his testimony from the inside out. There you go. Don't look at the outside mm -hmm. and let it affect your inside. Let your inside affect your outside. Because what you got living on the inside is more oh, powerful. Oh, yeah. That's why we, we all knew, we, we were just waiting, you know, for Pastor Sullivan to get to the end. Because we knew what God was going to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but maybe I didn't know. I didn't know. I knew what he was going to do. You know why? Because he did it for her numerous times over and over and over and over again. Yes. 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 So what she should have said, but I know we got to have a human reaction in this way. Well, she should have said, oh, okay, devil, I see what you're doing. Guess what? When I look back over uh, history, oh, But I look at all the things that Satan has tried to put in my back. I still come out smelling like a rose. I still smell out, smell and taste better. You can't hide my money. That's God's money. We're God's property. Because we just probably Satan can't touch us, he can try. The batter is not the cake. We try to be a cake. Y'all have God had some of Miss Nettles' cake right when he came out the oven. Man, I know I'm talking about cake, but Miss Mother E gave me a cobbler right out the oven. Y'all. <laughs> Control us. You know how we have to do it. Got to do it. What you say? In, in, in moderation. It felt like the spoon just kept. That's being greedy. Yeah, it was being greedy, but it was tasting good. But that's what we do. Yeah. Because stuff tastes good. Man. You stay in it. That bowl, that lick in that bowl tastes good. But we don't want to go through that fire. All I'm saying is get ready for the fire because look at what comes next. Yeah. The fire is, is, the, is the things necessary to make us who we are. Yes. Now we don't like trouble. I was going to, 
I'll go get some little bottles and put trouble and finances and relationships, all those things that we put in our batter that mess the batter up. But does it really mess the batter up or does it make us better saints because it helps us understand somebody else's struggle? Uh -huh, there we go. We start to change this perception around. So then you start to understand, I'm not going through this just for me. Yes. I'm going through this so I can help somebody else. And I can tell them how I trusted God enough. Amen. And he brought me out. And if you trust God enough, he'll bring you out. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I'm done. God's good. That's what God, I thank you for a chance to talk to people. God, help us yes. understand that the battle is not the cake. Yes. But the battle is necessary for us to become the cake. And those things that so easily beset us. I ask you to give us a mind to look to you and to trust you for what you're going to do. Anybody that's going through those things right now, I ask that you speak a word to them, a word of yes. encouragement to help yes. them know they're going through a necessary process to be effective witnesses for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to do a special pressure. Come on, pastors.